Hey guys, Taylor Maid here, and today I'm going to be answering your top questions on the 2016 MacBook Pro with Touch Bar. Now feel free to go to the bottom of this video to see all the details and specs of which 15-inch model that I'm currently using. Over the past few weeks, I've been receiving questions from you all, and today I wanted to take that opportunity and answer them using my experience thus far with the MacBook Pro 2016. The first question I received is, is the 2016 MacBook Pro Portable. Now compared to my previous laptop, the mid-2010 MacBook Pro, this laptop is a world of a difference when it comes to portability. This laptop is very sleek, it's very thin, it is really nicely designed, and it's so light too compared to the other MacBook. With this laptop, I've only heard the fans a handful of times, so that's pretty nice. Now the laptop, when it comes to heat, does not get that hot at all either. Even when I'm doing video editing, and while I'm also doing Lightroom, and also while I'm playing The Sims 4. So that's pretty nice. So another question I've been asked about is whether or not the touch bar is actually a gimmick or not. Now let me put this out there from the beginning. So the touch bar will not make your life worse and it is not going to improve your life a great deal. But it's really nice to have in certain cases. For me personally, when I use my, when I'm actually typing on Safari and filling in blanks for um, forms and websites and stuff, it's really nice to have the autofill feature right on the touch bar and I just have to click the touch bar and it's really nice to fill it in automatically. So that's a great feature. Now another thing I really like about the touch bar is using it for editing. For editing it really does help you when in Final Cut Pro when you're going through then leveling the volumes of things and the clips and it's really nice. It's also great for doing text sizing and also colors. Colors is a big deal on this. Before it would be really hard to go in with a mouse and pointer and then try to do the color through that and that was a little bit difficult. So this is nice to have. Now I do think that there's a lot of room for improvement. So I think in future updates, I think Apple will put out more features for the touch bar. So that'll be nice. I think my biggest feature that I want is more customization in Final Cut. It'd be nice to drag and drop um, buttons into Final Cut Pro into the touch bar and that would be really nice. So they have that feature actually already for um, other applications, but for Final Cut, they don't have that yet. Now I've also been messing around a little bit with Logic Pro X, which was also updated this week with the touch bar support. Now I think that they did a great job with that one. Now that one I think has the best use of the touch bar yet, and you can actually customize it. And that's a big feature that I've been looking for. So hopefully it'll be implemented in Final Cut also in the later update. Another question I've been receiving is, is the MacBook Pro really that bad? So I've seen a lot of negative press about the MacBook Pro 2016 with Touch Bar. And you know, quite frankly, it's because of the price. The price is pretty high. But when looking back at the historical Apple redesigns for laptops, you realize that with every redesign, Apple does push the price up and hike it up. And then after a year or two with the generations, then the price goes down to the prices that normal average people can actually afford. So is this laptop worth it though? So I was comparing this laptop with the Windows Surface Book Pro and that laptop was a pretty good competitor I thought. So that was actually one of the laptops I was considering before getting this laptop. So that one is actually the same exact price though as this model. So this model is the 15 inch model and the one that I was looking at was the 13 inch model. So I kind of thought, hey, since I'm already in the Apple ecosystem, there's really no point in me spending that kind of money on a Windows machine that might not play well with all my other devices. So that's why I ended up choosing my MacBook Pro. Also, this is a 15 inch model. The Windows Surface Book Pro is 13 inches and two inches does make a difference. So another question I've been receiving is, how are games on the MacBook Pro? So I wouldn't call myself a gamer, but I do play games occasionally. And one of the games I play is Sims 4. Now the Sims 4 on this MacBook is incredible. With the graphic settings all the way to the highest, it's very smooth and I don't have any problems or lag with it. So I don't know if that answers your question or not, but light gaming is pretty great on this, even at the highest settings of these games. Dongle life. How is dongle life? So honestly, dongle life has been pretty so-and-so, I would say. So I bought an adapter that has three USB ports and an SD slot, and that goes into a USB-C slot of my laptop. Now, this adapter is pretty great. Maybe I'll do a review on that later on, but it's a great investment and it really hasn't been too bad. It's helped me transition to this laptop much more smoother, actually. So I hook up all my USB drives to this adapter and I'm good to go. 
The one thing I will say that sucks the most is not having an SD slot into my laptop. Now I do a lot of videos and a lot of photography as well and not being able to put my SD card directly into my laptop kind of sucks. That was one of my greatest features of the 2010 MacBook Pro actually. So that's a little bit hard, but you know what, as long as I have this adapter, it's not that bad. Hopefully in the future, cameras all will be ready for wireless transferring and will be much faster, but at this moment, you still do need an SD slot and you do need an SD adapter. So I would highly recommend purchasing one if you have a MacBook Pro already. So another question I received is, have I hit the limit on the 16 gigs of RAM that's included with this laptop? Now, let me just put this out there. 16 gigs of RAM is a lot. Now, if you're doing things like Photoshop, Lightroom, playing games, uh, Final Cut, Logic Pro, all at once, you're gonna see lag, maybe. I haven't actually tried this out yet, but I'm assuming you might see some lag because that is, that is very memory intensive. Now, most people don't do these things all at once simultaneously. So I would say for that, you probably won't run into any issues. I haven't run into any issues myself. Now, what I will say though is this laptop is really fast. Now, I've done Final Cut Pro on this multiple times and Lightroom and Photoshop as well. Now, these apps run really fast when exporting and importing and overall, it's just so smooth compared to my mid-2010 MacBook. Maybe I'm spoiled by all this new technology and coming from a really old laptop, but this is a huge difference and it is fast, guys. It is a fast laptop. Now, should you get the 2016 MacBook Pro with Touch Bar? If you're coming from an older Mac, like the 2010, 2011, 2012 pre-Retina time, then this is gonna be a huge difference for you. The laptop is super fast, it's really thin, super portable, really light, great trackpad, great screen, and the touch bar is really nice in certain situations. Now the two biggest drawbacks I saw with this laptop were the price and also the SD card slot. So I talked about the SD card slot earlier, but now I'm gonna to talk to you about the price. Now the price is pretty high on this laptop and it's not in the budget for everyone to upgrade. So what I would recommend is maybe waiting for it or even looking at the other options. There's the MacBook 12 inch, which is really good. And if you wanna stay in the Mac ecosystem, there's also plenty of really good Windows computers out there as well. But if you do decide to get this laptop, you won't be disappointed. It's a great laptop and I don't regret my purchase at all. It's great to have, it's great for editing. It's just a great laptop. So that was my questions answered video review of the 2016 MacBook Pro with Touch Bar. I hope you enjoyed my video and please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. If you have any other questions about the MacBook Pro, please feel free to leave a comment below and I'll get back to you ASAP. Thanks for watching.